Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we are going to go over the Central Limit Theorem. The Central Limit Theorem is a core theory in statistics, and it puts forth that if you take a whole lot of samples from a population, if you average out all those samples, the average of all those samples will approximate the population mean. Further, as we look at a larger and larger amount of samples, the distribution of those samples will become more and more normally distributed. We're going to start off by writing out a few imports. We're going to additionally import random, which will let us get samples. And we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so we can look at our distribution of means at the end. Let's go ahead and make our income data uh, variable and fill it. So we're going to do the same thing we've done before. We'll do with open the name of our file, new line as my file data equals csv.reader with my file and we'll do a for loop to look at our data and then we'll start filtering our data. We'll want to filter out the header called ink total. We'll also want to filter out any income that is less than one. That's because it's hard to process data or hard to meaningfully process data that just is defined as net gain or net loss or nothing. We don't really necessarily know what that means so we're just not going to look at it. We'll also filter out any entries that are labeled as not applicable. And then we'll also filter out anybody who's under the age of 18. And then once we've gone through all that filtering, we'll go ahead and append it to our income data list. We're not going to limit our size this time. Uh, we're going to look at the entire data set of 3 million data points. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some space and we're going to go ahead and make a function real quick. Uh, functions are something really common in Python and programming in general. And we're going to use this one to get our sample size. We're going to input our population and the size we want. And then we'll just do sample list equals random dot sample with our population sample. And we'll return our sample list. We'll use this to get a whole bunch of different samples so we can show you things like our mean and means later on. Next, we'll want to get our sample mean. We'll define another function to do this. And we'll just take our sample list as input. So our sample size will be the length of this list. We'll also define our total sum income, which is all of the incomes added together. We'll start this off at zero, and then we'll start a for loop and look at for row in our sample list. Then as before, we will just add our total sum income to our individual income and total sum. Then we will calculate our mean as our total sum income divided by our sample size. Lastly, when this function is called, we want it to return the mean. Next, let's go ahead and define our skew and kurtosis function. We'll go ahead and take a list as well. This will give us the skew and kurtosis so that we can look at it later on. We're going to go through this really quickly as we went through this just in our previous video. So we're going to take our sample size, our total sum income. We're going to calculate the mean again just as we did before. And then we are going to get our variance. So we'll do our sum of squares and we will do a for loop to make our sum of squares. We'll also make S3 and S4 just like in the previous video. We'll do a loop to make these. We'll calculate our deviation score and we'll add that to our sum of squares and square that. We'll take our S3 and cube it and S4 and take it to the fourth power. Fix the typo real quick and then continue down the line. Our variance is our sum of squares divided by our sample size minus one. And our standard deviation is the square root of that. With all this information, it gives us everything we need to calculate our kurtosis and our skew. So let's go ahead and calculate our sample kurtosis. Again, this is this long convoluted formula that we went through before. Uh, I'm not going to read it off for you. We'll just go ahead and type it out real quick. And we're not going to subtract three at the end. That just means that no kurtosis equals three this time. Once we have this formula in place, we'll go ahead and also calculate our skew. And again, our sample skew is the same as before. Our S3 is divided by n minus 1 times the square root cubed. And then we'll just have this return our sample skew and sample kurtosis. This gives us everything we need to start evaluating the central limit theorem. So we're going to have to find x equals 0 as an iterator. And then n is our sample size. Then we'll also define the number of uh, samples we want to get. We'll also go ahead and make a list to hold the information on all the samples we're taking. Go ahead and make a loop. This time we'll do a while loop and we'll do while x is less than the number of samples we want to take. In this loop, we'll go ahead and start off by iterating x by one and then we'll go ahead and make a sample. We'll use our get sample function, input our income data and the size of sample we want to have. We'll calculate our sample mean using our get mean function. Once we have our sample mean, we'll go ahead and append this to our stats of samples list. That's everything we need to include for 
our while loop. Now we can start calculating the information on our population and our samples that we gathered. So get our population mean. Go ahead and fix this uh, being tabbed over too far and go ahead and get our stats as samples mean. So that we'll also call that our mean of means. We'll use our get mean function again to do this and just input our stats as samples list. Next, we'll go ahead and get our skew and kurtosis. Since we returned skew and kurtosis at the same time, we have to also get them at the same time using our get skew and kurtosis function. Again, we'll go ahead and input our stats of samples list to do this. And then we'll go ahead and also get the same information on our population as well. We'll consider our full list of data to be our population in this situation. Lastly, we'll go ahead and print everything out so we can review it once we actually start this. The last step for us to do is go ahead and grab our plot. To do this, we'll do plt.hist, hist for histogram. We'll input our stats of samples and we'll define our bins as equal to 50. And then we'll want to show that. Now we'll want to go ahead and run this in a new dedicated IPython console. We accidentally named our sample list Slample List. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I'm going to scroll up to where it tells us that that error occurred and then copy the correct one into the incorrect one. Hit save and run. It looks like we have another error. This time it's in our plot. We put bin instead of bin. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. And now we see we get information, including a graph. We can see this is starting to look a bit different. We see our population and sample uh, skew being very different from one another. There's very little skew, very little kurtosis. And our means are pretty close. So let's go ahead and make our sample size a little bit smaller and our number of samples a little bit smaller. We'll look at how it gets less normal. And we see still not a whole lot of skew, still not a whole lot of kurtosis. So really you only need 30 samples or so for this to start happening and our sample size of 10. Let's go ahead and start escalating this. So let's do a sample size of 100 and 300 samples. This will give us a much more normal looking distribution. Still a little bit skew, a little bit less ketosis. Uh, and let's go and up this one more time. Look at a sample size of 1000 with 3000 samples. This will take a little bit longer to calculate. We see something that's looking pretty nice and normally distributed. And let's go ahead and take a look at one more. So this will be much bigger and this will take about 10 minutes to calculate so we're just going to skip ahead to when this is done calculating and this is perfectly normally distributed down to the hundredth we have 0.05 skew and 0 0.002 kurtosis compared that to a population kurtosis of you know, 35 and a population skew of 4.8 it's pretty incredible so that does it for this tutorial. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and tune in for our next video where we will start going over the normal distribution. That will be our lead-in into inferential statistics like the Z-Test, T-Test, and ANOVA.